See, this is why Romans 6 tells us that in baptism, we're not just making a proclamation to the world. It says that in baptism, we actually die with Jesus, and then we are raised up to new life in him. I don't know how that happens. We've turned it into a symbol, but Romans 6 doesn't say it's a symbol. Romans 6 says it's something that happens in that moment, that when you go into the water, you go into his death, and when you come out of the water, you are now alive in Christ Jesus. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but according to the Scriptures, you need to be baptized in water because you haven't joined him in death until you have been raised up in life. And listen to me, that doesn't make it magical. It makes it part of God's plan. And also hear me. If you haven't been baptized, it doesn't mean you're not saved. It means there's more he wants to do. Ask him, is this where I should go? Is this what you would desire to do in me and do for me and do through me? His death paid for our sin and his resurrection gave us a way to live not just with him, but to live in him, in the holy places. That without Jesus, our sin excludes us from those places. So all our confidence for salvation, but all our confidence literally for everything in life rests on the blood of Jesus. Nothing, absolutely nothing is left up to us. Nothing rests on us. It's all on Him. And nothing is too difficult for Him. Confidence in Jesus takes away my anxiety over and about myself. I don't have to be able because Jesus is. My best isn't good enough, but it doesn't have to be. But here's the even better news. Jesus' sacrifice for our sins doesn't just make me better, it puts me in Him. Joanne talks about this regularly. We know that the Holy Spirit is in us, but the Scripture says somehow we are in Christ. Hear this, I'm in Christ. The reason the Holy Spirit can live in me is because I'm in Christ. That means wherever Jesus is, He's taking me with Him. Here's the problem, we tell it the other way around. Right? We talk about things like, you know, well, where, where you're going today, would you, would, you're taking Jesus there. Be careful where you go. You're going to be taking Jesus with you. What if that's completely upside down? Here's the reality. I'm not taking Jesus anywhere. He's already everywhere. But Jesus is taking me with him into the Father's presence as he makes intercession on my behalf. We are in Christ. This is why Ephesians 2, 6 can say that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Again, we are in Christ. As he sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession, I'm in him. I don't belong there, but Jesus brought me with him. And so that not just allows me, it welcomes me into that place. I couldn't overcome, but Jesus overcame for me. There's a lot I don't know, but Jesus knows it all. Most of all, he knows me. I don't see it yet, but Hebrew says, I see Jesus. And how long will it be before our hearts say, and that's enough?